Hey gang, Fletcher here with DJ Event Planner. Uh, this video is for those of you that manage more than one brand within one DJ Event Planner account and want to use a different request for information form for each brand. I will walk you through how to create and use a different form for each brand and ways to make it more efficient. I will also show you some advanced techniques that will require editing the HTML of your form, which I will walk you through. However, if you are uncomfortable editing the HTML, you will want to speak with a web developer, as we do not provide support for custom codes. So let's get started. When it comes to managing multiple brands, you'll want to do some backend setup first. To keep things neat and tidy, it is suggested that you utilize different event types for each brand. To edit your event types, you're going to go to Setup, Application, and Event Types. Here you can edit this list as needed. You'll notice here that at the top I have Wedding DJ and then Wedding Photo Booth. For example, if I had a DJ brand and a Photo Booth only brand. Once you're done editing those event types, click on Save Settings. Having these different event types will assist you with not only scheduled emails, but also with custom branded autoresponders for your request for information form. So once you have those event types set up, the next step is let's set up our autoresponders. To do that, we're going to go to Website Tools, Request for Information, and Autoresponder. These emails will be the emails that will go out as soon as a client submits a request for information form. You can choose to add either a plain text template or an HTML template. Because this is the first communication with a lead, I prefer to use a plain text template as it gets a better chance of getting past their spam or junk filters. With any template, you can create a template name. That's just for you to know what it is. Here you can choose the event types that you want this to go to. And I would have suggest having only one for each brand. So here I would choose my wedding DJ brand as well as my mitzvah DJ brand. And then create the content or the body of the email. Utilizing the merge tags, from the request for information form, you can customize this email template and personalize it to their request. You would simply repeat that for each brand. Once you have that saved, we can now begin setting up a request for information form. To do that, of course, we're going to be in Website Tools, Request for Information, and we'll start by clicking on Questions. Here you can edit the questions and choose what questions you want on the form for your first brand that you're working on. Once we have our questions set up for this brand, the next step is obviously clicking on Get Code. When working with multiple brands, you will need to embed it directly on your website with using one of the static codes. The code I suggest using is the responsive embed code Mobile Ready. To use this code, simply click on Copy Code and then head to your website editor and place that code where you'd like to have your form appear. And once you've done that, you can now come back in and set up your questions for your other brands. And you would repeat that for each brand that you want to set up. So there you have that. That is how you set up and utilize a request for information form for different brands. Now I like to be a little bit more efficient and I want my forms to only have specific information on them that are pertinent to that brand. So for example, remember I created those different event types for each brand, wedding DJ, mitzvah DJ, wedding photo booth, mitzvah photo booth. Currently, when I paste that form on my website, it's gonna include all event types. Now if I have my photo booth brand, for example, I only wanna see photo booth event types there, or vice versa with DJ, I only wanna see DJ event types there. So how do we do that? This step is going to require editing the HTML code, and again, which DJ Event Planner does not provide support for custom coding. So if you are not comfortable editing your code, please make sure you consult with a web developer. I will walk you through the steps needed to edit the code prior to pasting it into your website. To begin, to edit the code, it is best to paste it into a basic text editor, such as Notepad or WordPad, or if you have one, you can utilize an HTML editor. You do not want to use programs like Microsoft Word or other as that will mess up the formatting of the code and will break your form. In this example, I'm going to use Notepad on Windows. I'm going to paste the code 
into my notepad. And there's really only two things that we need to do here to make the form more efficient for our brands. First, we can remove any event types that are not related to the brand we are working on for the website that we're gonna embed the form into. To do that, you can use the search function or look for this item right here where it says select name equals event type. To the right of that, you will see the options or our event types that'll appear in the dropdowns. Let's say I'm working solely on my DJ brand. I can highlight the wedding photo booth brands or event. I can highlight the wedding photo booth event types and delete them. Make sure that you're getting both the first option and the closing option tags when deleting that. And make sure you're not deleting anything additional because it could cause your form to break. We can also do that with our other event types. So we can remove the mitzvah photo booth event type as we're working on our DJ brand. The next thing that we can do once we have our event types squared away on our form code, we can embed a little bit more code to this to let us know what brand the request for information form submission came from. To do that, we're gonna go back into our DJ Event Planner account. We're gonna go back to our website tools, click on Request for Information Form, click on Questions, and then click on Advanced here at the top. We're gonna to look for the Inquiry Form Source box here. We can type in the brand name or whatever you'd like to have in there to let you know where it came from. For this example, we'll type in Brand A, just to make it simple. And then we'll click on Get Code. You're gonna now wanna copy this little bit of code here. And now we're gonna go back to our code that we are editing. This code can go anywhere between the opening form and closing form tags. To make it easier, I just like to put it right below the closing. So we'll simply create a new space and paste that bit of code. And now when a client submits a request for information form from that brand website, it'll come into DG Event Planner and let us know what website it came from. There's one additional thing that you can do here as well. If you'd like to create a custom thank you page instead of the default thank you, you can go into your DJ Event Planner account. You can enter that URL of where that custom thank you page is and then click on get code as well and then paste that code in the same place as you just pasted the other code. So if we copy that, we can go back here. I know there's not a URL in there. Create a new one, post it there, and that will now take them to our custom web page. Obviously, your website would be here in the value field. We're now going to copy our code that we have edited, and we're going to head to our website editor and paste that code to where we want our form to appear. And now that edited form for your brand is on your site. And when that form comes in for that brand, you'll see that it shows brand A right here. And you'll be able to tell which brand that form came from. And to reiterate, if you are not comfortable with editing HTML code, please make sure to consult with a web developer. Again, DJ Event Planner does not provide support for custom codes. I hope what you've learned from this video has made it easier to manage your leads for different brands. We look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.